Okay, so I'm going to be going over some of the questions that are on the review. <clears throat> um, I just picked a couple of questions of each type so I could go through these so you guys will have worked out examples. If you have additional questions when you're done with this, you can either email me directly, we can set up something on Zoom or Google Hangout, Google Meet, basically whatever you guys need. So I'm going to go through these. I might go through these a little bit quick just to try to make the video short. So if there's something that you felt like I went a little bit too fast, then just pause, write down what you need, rewind it, whatever you need to do. So as I go through these, I will do a couple of examples and then I'll pause the video so I can erase it, write the next examples on the board. That way the video is not half of me just erasing stuff on the board. So the first one that I'm going to do with you guys is going to be uh, just question number one. <clears throat> so we want to solve a radical equation. So when we are solving the radical equations, there's a few different types that we will see. The first type that we see here, we have a radical equals another radical. So whenever we have something like this, we just take the insides of those radicals and set them equal to each other. So we will set 3 minus n equal to 3n plus 15. Now we are just going to solve for the variable. So we'll get the n's on one side, so I'll add over the n, and we'll get the numbers on the other side, so I'll subtract over the 15. So we have 3 minus 15 on this side, which is negative 12. We have 3n plus n on this side, which is 4n. So then our final step, we divide over the 4. So negative 12 divided by 4 gives us negative 3. Now with the radicals, these are ones where we have to plug this back in to make sure it works. So we plug it into the inside of each radical, and see if we get a positive number on the inside of the radical. We're just trying to make sure we get the same thing on both sides. Remember, we only have to do this if we have an even numbered radical, so square root, fourth root, something like that. So if we plug in negative three for n here, we get three minus negative three, which is positive six. Here we get three times negative three, which is negative nine. Negative nine plus 15 also gives us positive six. So we got the same number on both sides, so that means that our solution here is good. Okay, so I hope this first one made sense. For the next type, in example number two, this time we have the square root of something is equal to a number instead. So what we're going to do for this one is we need to get rid of that radical. The way that we're going to get rid of the radical is we are going to square both sides. So we have the square cancels the square root here, so we have b minus 5 is equal to 3 squared. Now 3 squared, this simplifies to give us 9. So then our final step, we just add the 5 to the other side. So we get that b is equal to 14. So now, just like before, we need to plug this back into the original equation and make sure we get the same thing on both sides. So if we plug in 14 for b, we get 14 minus 5, which is 9. And the square root of 9 does simplify to give us 3. So that means that this is also a good solution. Okay, so I hope that these first two made sense. I'm going to pause really quick just so I can erase the stuff on the board, and then I'll start on the next ones. Okay, so the next two that we're going to do in that first group are going to be examples five and seven. So in number five, we have a square root of something is equal to more than one term. Now we're gonna start this similar to what we did in the previous one. We need to get rid of the square root, so we're going to square both sides. So the square cancels the square root here, so we have two n minus seven. Now since we have n minus three that's being squared, we have to rewrite this as n minus three times n minus 3. And then we're going to have to multiply this out. So distribute the n, distribute the negative 3. So we get n squared minus 3n minus another 3n, and then negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So now we'll combine our like terms. So we have n squared. These two become minus 6n plus 9. Now we need to get everything on the same side because we have the n squared, the n, and a constant. So we have to get everything on the same side and then we will factor this off. So minus the 2n, and I will add 
apathetic. So we have n squared. These two combine to give us minus 8n. And then these combine to give us plus 16. So now when we factor this, we need two numbers that multiply to be 16 and add to be negative 8. So that's going to be negative 4 and negative 4. So then our solution for both of these parentheses is just going to be n equals positive 4. So we only have to write it once. So now we will take this, plug it back into the original. So we have 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 minus 7 gives us 1. And here, if we plug in 4 minus 3, that also gives us 1. So we've got the same thing on both sides. So our solution here is good. So now the last one for this group is going to be number 7. So for this one, we have a number that is next to that cube root that we're um, adding to it. So we need to start by combining it to the other side before we can get rid of the radical. So minus the 8. So we have the cube root of m is equal to 6 minus 8, which is negative 2. And now since this one is the cube root, we are going to get rid of it by cubing or raising both sides to the third power. So that cancels here. We have m is equal to negative 2 to the third power, which is negative 8. Now since this one was a cube root, we do not have to worry about plugging this one back in since it was an odd number root. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next group. Okay, so the next ones that we're going to do are going to be examples 8 and 9. So these ones are in the second group. We are solving exponential equations. So with the exponential equations, these ones we do not have to worry about plugging our solutions back in. So the first thing that we're going to try to do, if the bases are not the same, is we're going to try to convert them so that they are the same base. So here the base is 5 and 25. So we start with the bigger number, 25, and we see if we can rewrite this as the smaller base to a whole number power. So we can take 25 and rewrite that as 5 to the second power. So we'll have 5 to the 2n equals 5 to the second. So now that the bases are the same, now we just set the powers equal to each other. So the bases no longer matter at this point. So we will just set 2n equal to 2, and then divide by 2, we get n is equal to 1. And so that is what our solution will be for this one. For number 9, the nice thing with this one is the bases are already the same. The bases are already 4. So therefore, we just set the powers equal to each other. So 2x plus 1 equals negative 3x minus 2. So we need the x's on one side, the constants on the other. So I'm going to add over the 3x, and I'm going to minus over the 1. So 2x plus 3x, we get 5x. Negative 2 minus 1, we get negative 3. So we divide over the 5. We get x is equal to negative 3 fifths. That does not simplify any further, so therefore we can leave our answer just like that. Okay? So the last one that we will cover for this group is going to be example number 12. So we have 1 fifth to the power of x is equal to 25. So anytime one of our bases is a fraction, the first thing we want to do is get rid of the fraction. So we do this by taking the reciprocal of the fraction, so we flip it upside down, and then we change the power to a negative. So we take the 1 over 5, flip that upside down to 5 over 1, which is 5, and then we just take the power and we make it negative. So we have 5 to the negative x equals 25. Now we solve this one just like before. Now we already saw this base here, we can take the 25 and we can rewrite that as 5 squared. So now we just set the powers equal. So negative x equals 2. And then to get rid of the negative, we'll just divide both sides by negative 1. So we get x is equal to negative 2. And so that is what our solution will be for this one. Okay, so I'm going to pause and I'll write down the next group. Okay, so in this next group, it says that we want to solve each equation by using logs or natural logs. So we're going to do 14 and 16. So for 14, um, since the base is something other than e, it does not matter if you use regular log or natural log. Just out of force of habit, I always use natural log, but if you do regular log, you will still get the same answer. 
So we need to get rid of the exponent. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Now from here, anytime we add the log of something to a power, we can take that power and bring it out to the front. So this will become x times ln of 4 equals ln of 81. Now our final step, we divide over the ln of 4. So then we take the natural log of 81 divided by the natural log of 4, and this is what goes in the calculator. Make sure you close off the parentheses after you type in the 81 in your calculator, and you should get 3.1699. And so this is what our solution will be for the first one. For the next one, in example number 16, since this one has the base of E, this is one that we have to take the natural log of both sides because the natural log will cancel out the E. So we take ln of E to the 3x minus 9 equals ln of 54. So the ln cancels with the E, so we have 3x minus 9 equals ln of 54. So now at this point, we're going to have to do more in the calculator, but at this point, I typed in the natural log of 54 into my calculator. So I got 3x minus 9 was equal to 3.9890. So then from here, we add the 9 to the other side. So we get 3x is equal to 12.9890. And then our final step, we divide over the 3. So we get for our final answer that x is equal to 4.3297. And so that is what our final answer will be here. So this is how we solve exponential equations uh, by either taking the log or natural log of both sides. So I'm going to pause the video. We'll move on to the next group. All right. So this next group that we have is going to be on solving log equations. So similar to the radicals, there's a few different types that we will see. So the first type is the most straightforward. This is where we just have the log of something equals the log of something. So the logs do not matter at this point. We just take the insides of the logarithms, set those equal to each other. So negative 4a minus 1 is equal to 3 minus 2a. Now we'll combine our like terms. So I'm going to add over the 4a and minus over the 3. So negative 1 minus 3 gives us negative 4. And then uh, negative 2a plus 4a, that gives us positive 2a. So then we take the 2, divide it to the other side. So we get a is equal to negative 2. Now, similar to the radicals, we have to take this and plug it back into the original to make sure that we get positive numbers on the inside. So if we plug in negative 2 for each of our a's, here we get negative 4 times negative 2, which is positive 8. 8 minus 1 gives us positive 7. So since we have a positive, we're good there. If we plug it in here, we get 2 times negative 2. So that's, I'm sorry, negative 2 times negative 2. So that's positive 4. 3 plus 4, that gives us a positive 7. So we're good here. Our solution's good. For example, number 20, this one we have the log of something is equal to a number instead. So now if what we're going to do is we have to convert this from log form to exponential form. So we take the base, which is 7 raise it to the power of the term on the other side. This equals the term on the inside of the log. Now from here we just simplify. So because we have a negative exponent here, that means we have to take the reciprocal and then the power will become positive. So this becomes 1 over 7 to the power of positive 2 equals m. 7 to the power of 2 gives us 49. So we have 1 over 49 equals m. Now, if we plug this back in, we just have the log of 1 over 49. So since 1 over 49 is positive, that means that our solution is good here. Okay, so we're going to do two more examples in this group. Okay, so for the last questions in this group, we're going to do 22 and 26. So in 22, we have more than one logarithm, and then we have a number on the other side. <clears throat> so for this one, since we have multiple logs on the same side of the equal sign, we have to combine those together into one log. If we are subtracting the logs like what we see here, we're going to divide the inside terms. Conversely, if we were adding the two, we would multiply the terms inside the logs. Since this is subtract, we're going to make this log base 4 of x divided by 
x minus 1 is equal to 3. Now from here, we're going to solve this just like the previous one. We need to convert from log form to exponential form. So we're going to have 4 to the power of 3 is equal to x over x minus 1. <clears throat> so we plug 4 to the third into the calculator. That's going to give us 64. Now we need to get rid of the fraction. So the way we get rid of the fraction is by multiplying both sides by the denominator. And then I'll take the 64 and I'll distribute it to the inside. So 64 times x, we get 64x. 64 times negative 1 gives us negative 64. And then on this side, we just have x. So we'll combine our like terms. I'll subtract over the 64x. So we have negative 64 is equal to x minus 64x, which that gives us negative 63x. And then our final step, we divide over the negative 63. So negative 64 over negative 63, the only thing we can do to simplify this is just cancel out the negatives. So we get x is equal to 64 over 63. And so this is what our potential solution will be. Now we take this and we plug it back in. So here we just have x, so 64 over 63 is positive. Here, if we did 64 over 63 minus 1, you just plug that in your calculator, it gives you a positive decimal. We got a positive in both places, so therefore, we are good. Now for 20 cents. So first thing that we need to do here, we are adding a term to our log, so therefore, we need to move it to the other side. So we're going to start by minusing over the 2. So we have ln of 2x is equal to 4. So now we convert this to exponential form. So since it's natural log, that means it's the base of e. So when we convert this to exponential form, we will have e to the power of 4 is equal to 2x. Then from here, we divide both sides by 2. Now we just go to the calculator. So we take e to the power of 4. Make sure you close off that parenthesis. And then you're going to divide that by 2. So when you plug this part into the calculator, we will get 27 0.2991. So if we plug this back in for x, we get the natural log of 2 times this. So if we take 2 times this, that's a positive number. So therefore, that means that we are good. So this is how we solve these types of equations. So now I'm going to pause. I'll erase the stuff on the board, and we will move on to the story problems. We'll do a couple of those. Okay, so for the story problem ones, we're going to start with examples 1 and 5. So in example number one, the size of the raccoon population at the national park increases at the rate of 4.9% per year. If the current population is 117, find out how many raccoons there should be in eight years. Now for this one, they give us the equation that is listed right here. Um, so it says use this equation and just round to the nearest whole number. So therefore, we only need to plug in the numbers that they tell us. So this y0, that represents the initial population which they told us was 117. And they also give us the variable t, which they told us that this is 8 years. So we're going to multiply this by 8. So now we will just take this, plug this into the calculator, just like how we see. And this gives us 173.15. But the question says round to the nearest whole number. So to the nearest whole number, that would be 173 raccoons. So when the question already gives you the formula, just plug in whatever numbers you need to, and then the rest just goes into the calculator. Okay, you don't have to worry about setting up the equation. Now for example number five, we have $480 that's invested at 10% compounded quarterly after a period of eight years. So since this is an investment, um, this is the compound unit. So we had the two formulas. We had the one for compounding. We had the one for continuous. This one did not say continuous in the question, so we're going to use the regular compounding formula, which is listed right here. So A is going to be the ending amount. We do not know what that is, but that's what we're trying to find. So that's why I just put a question mark here. Um, they tell us that we are investing $480. So that's the principal or the starting amount. R is 10%, so as a decimal, 
that would be 0 0.10. N is going to be 4 because they tell us it's compounded quarterly. So quarterly is 4 times per year. And then T, this is after a period of 8 years, so therefore T is going to equal 8. So we have our equation here, now we will plug in our variables. So we have A is equal to P, which is 480, times 1 plus R over N, so 0 0.10 over 4, to the power of N times T, so to the power of 4 times 8. So now since the variable's on the left side, all the numbers are on the right side, we now just plug this into the calculator, remember just like how we see it on the board, including all of those parentheses. So when we plug this in, that should give us $1,057.80. So this is what our investment is going to be, okay? Okay, so the next two story problems we're going to do are going to be number six and number eight. So in number six, the question says if $5,000 is invested for six years at 5% compounded continuously, find the future value. So since this one uses that word continuously, that means that we have to use that second equation. So A is equal to PE to the RT. So P is the starting amount, so that's what we invest, that's the $5,000. R was 5%, so this would be 0 0.05 as a decimal. And then T is the amount of time, they tell us that this is for six years. So we'll just plug everything into the equation. So we have P, which is 5,000, times E to the R times T. So R is 0 0.05. And then we multiply that by T, which is 6. So now this whole thing goes into the calculator, and we get that our ending value is $6,749.29. And so that is what our answer will be here. Now for the next one, example number eight, find out how long it takes a $3,200 investment to double if it's invested at 8% compounded semi-annually, round to the nearest tenth of a year. And they give us the formula. It's the same formula that we used back in question number five. So the starting amount that we have here is $3,200, but they tell us that this is going to double. So that means that our ending amount is going to be $6,400. R, which is the rate, this is 8%, so that would be 0 0.08. N is 2 because semi-annually means 2 times per year. And then T is what we're solving for. So now we'll plug this into our formula. So A, which is 6,400, equals P, which is 3,200, times 1 plus R over N, so 0 0.08 over 2, to the power of N times T, so to the power of 2 times T. So this time the variable is what we're solving for, so that means eventually to solve this we're going to have to use logs. So we need to start by solving and simplifying as much as we can. So I'm going to take the 3200, divide that to the other side. So 6400 divided by 3200, that's going to simplify to give us 2. Now, just to make it easy in one step, I'm also going to simplify the part that is on the inside of the parentheses. So I'm going to do 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 2. So that is going to give us 1.04. And then our power is still going to be 2t. So now we need to get rid of the exponents. So now we're going to take the log of both sides. So just like before, I'm going to use ln. So that means our power 2t can come to the front. So we have ln of 2 equals 2t times ln of 1.04. So now to get t by itself, we need to divide over both the 2 and the natural log of 1.04. So that cancels this, and it cancels the 2. So now we're going to plug it into the calculator like this. So natural log of 2 divided by parentheses 2ln of 1.04, and then close off all those parentheses. So when we plug this into the calculator, we should get that t is equal to 8.8, .8, and then this is going to be years, because they originally told us in the problem we were dealing with years. So that is what our answer will be then. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the back. We have just two more examples that we're going to do. So the last two that we're going to do are going to be examples 10 and 12. 
So in example number 10, a rumor spread at an elementary school with 1,200 students according to the model n is equal to 1,200 times 1 minus e to the negative 0.16d, where n is the number of students who have heard the rumor and d is the number of days that have elapsed since the rumor began. How many days, so we're solving for this variable, must elapse for 500 people to have heard the rumor? So this one is similar to the very first one that we did in this group where they give us the equation, we just need to plug in the number. So n represents the number of students. We want to figure out how long it takes for 500 to have heard it. So we're going to plug in 500 for n. Now for this one, you can solve this one a few different ways. You can take the 1,200 and distribute it to the inside, or what I did is I just divided over the 1,200. So 500 over 1,200, we can cancel the zeros and simplify that to 5 twelfths. So this will equal 1 minus e to the negative 0.16d. So now we need to get e by itself, so I'm going to subtract over the 1. So we have 5 twelfths minus 1, which that is going to give us negative 7 twelfths. Which, of course, you could just take this and plug it into the calculator and write the decimal. That is perfectly fine. Equals negative e to the negative 0.160. So now the last thing before I can um, take the natural log of both sides is we have that negative sign in front of the e. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide both sides by negative 1, and that's just going to get rid of both of those two negative signs. So now I can take the natural log of both sides and that will cancel the e. So we have ln of 7 twelfths is equal to negative 0.16d, and then our final step, divide by 0.16. So now we take this, we plug it into the calculator, once again, just like how we see it. So this gives us d is equal to 3.37 days. So that is what our answer will be then. Okay, the last one that we are going to do is example number 12. So the distance d in miles that can be seen on the surface of the ocean is given by d is equal to 1.7 times the square root of h, which I have that written here, where h is the height in feet above the surface. How high, so we're solving for h, um, would a platform have to be to see a distance of 19.5 miles? So 19.5 is the distance. So we're going to plug that in for d. So we have 19.5 equals 1.7 times the square root of h. So now from here, we need to get this part by itself. So I'm going to divide over the 1.7. So now at this point, I just took this and plugged this into the calculator, which gives me 11.4706. So now this time we don't have an exponent that we're trying to get rid of, we have a radical we're trying to get rid of. So since we want to get rid of the square root, we are going to square both sides. <clears throat> so that gets rid of this here. So we take this value and square it, and we get h is equal to 131.57. So the question said how high to the nearest foot. So to the nearest whole number, this would be 132. Okay, so I hope that these examples made sense. Like I said before, if you needed to kind of slow them down, if you need to skip around back and forth and rewatch them, that is perfectly fine. If you have any additional questions, um, we can set up a time that we can talk either on like Zoom or Google Hangout, Google Meet, um, over the phone, whatever you guys need. So just let me know if you have any additional questions before the test on Thursday.